a minor subdivision review of a two-lot subdivision located off Shore Road uh, under Section 16-2-3, Minor Subdivision Review Completeness. Uh, if the applicant could uh, step to the podium and give us an overview of the project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Terry Dewan, landscape architect in Yarmouth, uh, representing Mr. Manassas. Um, as you recall, we were here last month, and uh, we had a discussion about the level of information that was required uh, to make sure that we did meet the technical requirements of the ordinance, specifically relative to stormwater management, um, surveying, uh, contour intervals, and so forth. And while it probably was not absolutely necessary to do some of this information, we felt it very helpful uh, in taking the board's counsel uh, to have a two-foot contour map made of the entire property. It's been very helpful for us in looking at things like the probable location of a, a structure on both of these lots, location of driveways, um, cutting patterns, and so forth. Uh, we have given you, I think, a very complete application. Maureen, in her memo of May 19, 98, talked about a couple of minor deficiencies which we have already addressed, and if you're interested, we could talk about those tonight. Um, I would like to present a brief overview, though, of the project and then I'll open it up uh, to the board for questions. As you know, we are uh, a two-lot minor subdivision. Uh, these are uh, two properties on Shore Road, each roughly five acres in size. Um, the middle lot, Lot 2, uh, would have an access point off of Shore Road. We have gone out and measured site distance, uh, and on the plan that's on the wall right now, and again, I do have a copy for the board, uh, we're showing that site distance to the right is 520 feet, and site distance to the left is 750 feet, certainly well in excess of the minimum required for uh, this type of use. Uh, we are recommending that a maple tree that's right next to the road shoulder be removed. Uh, that's probably within the right-of-way. It would not be covered by the uh, restrictions on that first 40 feet. Uh, on the lot one, which is a, an access way off of an existing graveled road, uh, we've measured site distances to the right of 790 feet and site distance to the left, left of 665 feet. Again, well in excess of what's required out there. Uh, if you recall, when we first came before you, we had some preliminary soils investigations that was done by Richard Sweet. Um, uh, Richard had to go on a, a vacation, or he went on vacation, I can say, and in order to make a timely submittal to the planning board, we had to find an alternative person. And so uh, Alan Burwell, uh, Burnell from um, Hickman Greer stepped in, was able to uh, go out there and find the five suitable test sites and do the HHE 200 evaluations on both of the lots. And those are shown uh, on both of the areas, both here for lot two lot there for lot one, uh, along with ne necessary technical data that was required uh, by the code. Uh, we did have a supplement that was required after the initial review by the code enforcement officer requiring that a separate system be supplied for uh, laundry waste, and there has been uh, a, supplemental a supplemental submission made uh, to Maureen covering that aspect from the, uh, the depth to restrictive, restrictive layers is between 15 and 25 inches. Um, the, the plan itself is fairly straightforward. Uh, the driveway locations uh, are selected right here, although there is some flexibility in where the driveway can be located. It seems that in terms of locating the, the optimum building site for Lot 2 and avoiding wetlands and avoiding uh, interfering with what is the, the best place at this point for finding the on-site disposal location, that the location where we're showing the driveway there is probably where it's going to have to happen. Uh, the same thing with Lot 1. Uh, as you go out there, you know there's a fairly open, uh, fairly extensive field, about an acre and a half or so, and it seemed like the best place to bring a driveway in is off of this existing gravel road that is now uh, yet a name. Uh, there is an opening in the woods uh, that sort of allows a good access point down to the probable building site. We have shown necessary setbacks, uh, and we have shown uh, setbacks from the, uh, the top of the embankment and the buildings as we're showing right there, uh, avoid wetlands and avoid any interference uh, with any of the, the setbacks. 
Uh, we have indicated the, the wetlands on the property, as we discussed last time, that were uh, defined uh, and delineated in the field by woodland alternatives. Uh, and so there's, uh, at least the way we're showing the, uh, the homes uh, in a prototypical form right here, no impacts on wetlands due to the construction of the roads, the driveways, or the septic systems. Uh, we had noted uh, on the earlier plan that there is an existing water line off of Shore Road that goes down to the existing cottage on the adjacent property. We have taken into consideration in the reconfiguration of the building envelope for Lot 2. Uh, again, this is some information that's on the plan, which we can leave with you tonight. Uh, there is a 30-foot uh, wide uh, uh, service easement along the existing uh, water line uh, to, to allow for the, the servicing and the uh, maintenance of that line across Lot 2 to serve the existing cottage. Uh, we are also noting uh, on the plan that uh, all the utility services are to be provided off of Shore Road and not off this existing gravel driveway here, and that all utility services be placed on the ground. Uh, the plan that we have with uh, us tonight has been stamped by Richard Parker, the, the survey that's done, the, the boundary survey and the topographic survey, so we feel that that meets that requirement of the ordinance. Um, one of the things that was talked about at the last um, uh, meeting, of course, was uh, dealing with the open space issue. And we've battered back and forth a number of options, and it was recommended that we look at uh, a fifth of an acre that would be deed restricted on each of the properties. Uh, the hatchard line that's shown uh, adjacent to Shore Road is that fifth of an acre. Uh, there is a deed restriction that you have a copy of. Uh, Warren Turner is the attorney for Peter Nassis is here tonight to answer any specific questions about the adequacy of that language or any other aspects of the, uh, of the project from a legal perspective. It's our understanding that Mike McGovern is reviewing that language right now um, and will uh, defer to the board for any further comment on that uh, aspect of it. Uh, with that, I guess I would uh, like to turn it back over to the board for any specific questions about the application. Thank you. Uh, at this point, uh, it would be appropriate for the board to go through, uh, just take a minute and go through the um, items which are indicated uh, on the subdivision review application completion checklist and just see if there are any of them that we uh, feel we need clarification on uh, from the applicant. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that, Maureen. Maureen is going to uh, go through the checklist for us uh, and flag some of these uh, some of these items for discussion. The minor subdivision review checklist is on the third page, um, and what I've done is identify potential incomplete items. Uh, under item 3A, uh, there's been a suggestion that uh, in light of the town's ongoing E911 program, now would probably be a good time to name that gravel road when, when the people who are going to be living there and are living there now have the most opportunity to um, ha participate in what the name is going to be. Um, and it's up to the board to decide whether that's a completeness issue or an issue that could be dealt with um, at some point during the review. Uh, secondly, proposed water line easement. I believe the applicant has shown it on the plan this evening. Um, third, stamped or signed uh, by registered main surveyor. Again, that is a requirement, and the applicant has indicated that they would be doing that prior to asking for approval. Um, under 11C, the applicant the state of utilities would be underground. Um, the town engineer is suggesting that the location of utilities actually be identified on the lots. Um, excuse me, 11C is actually an identification that there's adequate water to serve the sites. Uh, typically what the board gets is a letter from the water district that, that says there's adequate water. Um, again, uh, not necessarily something that couldn't be dealt with said the next meeting. Um, and then 14 is the proposed utilities that the town engineer has asked to be depicted on the plan. Uh, and number 15 is the language on the uh, open space. Again, the applicant has submitted that and language. Uh, whether or not it's adequate isn't necessarily an issue for completeness. Uh, but I should also point out that the memo from the Conservation Commission that the board received this evening also talks about uh, that language when the board gets to the substantive review portion of the application. Are there any questions? 
comment on two of those items that we just talked about? Yes, uh, um, the, information the road been. issue is, uh, is an intriguing one because the road does not go across our property. Um, and the applicant has been in contact with people that, uh, that own the property adjacent to it. And it's my understanding they're working out uh, some resolution of this to, to, to name the road. But it's really not our baby to name, as it were. Um, the water uh, letter, uh, we were under the understanding we'd just be uh, applying to the Department of Water District for uh, permission to hook up to the water line on Shore Road, much the same way that uh, the neighbors are. We do, uh, we have a request in the Department of Water District and we have not yet heard back from them. Uh, do any members of the board have any uh, wishes to note items for completion? Yes, Nancy. Do we know when we will hear whether or not this is a minor subdivision? Uh, Maureen has done some work on that. Let's let her Final present. determination is made by the board. Uh, the, the definition of the ordinance says that a subdivision is minor if it's uh, five or fewer lots and does not add any major facilities to the town. Um, so I believe this greatly meets that definition. Um, but it does, it, you know, to be specific, the ordinance says that the board makes that final determination. So now would be a good time. Five or fewer? It used to be three, didn't it? Three? Mm -hmm. Tom. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, Terry, around the uh, wetland areas, uh, principally in lot two, there's a 20 foot setback. Is that, um, what is that? I think the state has a 25-foot minimum. Not that we're aware of. Um, we're, we're saying that uh, you know, we're showing 25-foot setback that uh, would be developed as part of the building envelope, and um, no construction would occur within that area as a means of protecting those wetlands. So, so you're saying that the state minimum is 20, not 25? I'm, I'm saying in this particular case, we're we're applying a, a number of 20, which we feel is adequate to protect the wetlands in, the, in these areas. And we're also saying, too, that if anybody uh, wanted to disturb the wetlands, um, they would have to come to the planning board for uh, permission under the town's ordinance. Uh, again, I'm not so sure it's a completeness issue, but I, I just think there ought to be clarification on that. I'd hate to have an indication on a plan that might not meet a state-required uh, setback. But that's not a completeness issue. It's just it's an issue of uh, preciseness. Uh, point of clarification in terms of completeness. The existing access, and I apologize. I, I missed the last meeting, and I wasn't up to, uh, I haven't uh, had the benefit of the previous discussions on this, although I re reviewed the um, meeting minutes. Um, the gravel access roadway is uh, only has a 12-foot right-of-way. Um, does this fall under the new um, standard, quote unquote, public access road standard? That how how is that met in this case? We're talking about the existing the existing roadway off of Lot One. Uh, that runs parallel, but not within Lot One. None of the lots need the private access waiver because they all have ex uh, a minimum amount of frontage on Shore Road. So as long as they have 125 feet of frontage on Shore Road, they don't need the waiver. Um, they don't have to get access where they have frontage. So in this case, this applicant is taking advantage of an existing roadway instead of adding another curb cut. Um, yes. And the roadway isn't on the lot. They're, they're, they have rights to use that right-of-way. Okay. And there's <coughs> no issue within the ordinance that, although they, they certainly can get access from Shore Road, that they can uh, use a, a narrower right-of-way. Like that, I'm just wondering to get a fire truck down here and turning into this driveway, for example. We hear an awful lot about that. And 
I'm, I, I'm I, not I guess we just need a letter from the fire chief that there's no yeah, issue. I'm not aware that there's any issue with the ordinance, but I will check with the code officer and the fire chief. I mean, I don't disagree with the idea of doing that. I just want to be sure for the completeness of the application that there's no outstanding issue. The uh, only other question I have is uh, I know, particularly in this area, the issue of visibility of houses and the massiveness of houses, uh, uh, the Heffenreffers, the Strouts, um, and I saw the um, uh, covenants that are, are provided with a package. Is there any further restrictions being placed? Um, for example, uh, over in Stonegate, although there's uh, an assumed building envelope using the side yard setbacks, it doesn't necessarily mean that a neighbor isn't going to encroach within that to do you know, maintenance clearing and everything else, and oftentimes it becomes uh, uh, very much clearing where you have fairly, two fairly large houses. Is there any need for any further restriction in terms of clearing on the properties? My name is Peter Anastas. I'm the owner. I didn't do any, Tom, um, man, because the people who look at this type of lot are usually, I mean, a five acre lot are very much into the privacy. I mean, I'd be you know, willing to make it a no cut on the side, the side lots, but I don't. I think it's the last thing they're going to want to be doing is to. Cut you've right up you've done a lot of these, Peter, and you know the irony that when you have uh, it's there's a great ad on TV where there's a man alone on an island at a beach, and the one kid in the world that has a boombox comes up and sits right next to him. Uh, I've seen developments in Stonegate where someone wanted to put in a pool, or they put the pool adjacent to the property line. That just whatever would uh, seem to be common sense just often isn't, isn't followed. And, and I've heard a lot of concerns from people buying property or who are in the middle of developing property. They just wish that there had been some sort of a covenant or a restriction on clearing or locating of certain relatively non-compatible portions of uses, tennis courts next to uh, property lines and so forth. Well, I'm happy to have a no cut in that same, you know, when it's out of the building envelope. Absolutely. That doesn't, because I don't think they'd be cut in any way. And, Frankly, they'd look better if they didn't. Well, one other thing, Tom, while I'm up here, is that I did check with the surveyor on that 20, that 20 he, was, he was asking me about the different, the, the, the distances he wanted to put off that wetland. And there was no requirement, state requirement, for that particular wetland. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we just added the 20 feet there. Actually, we thought we were adding, adding something. Are there any other items of complete? Anyone had questions on? Uh, from my my point of view, uh, since the utilities issues here really relate to servicing of individual homes and not infrastructure for subdivision neighborhoods, uh, but I, I think one can. Uh, include those in subsequent development of the package uh, because it's uh, pretty much assumed that there'll be individual services to the houses. I don't know how other, you know, how yeah, no communal, communal facilities for utilities here. Individual these, subject these lots have their own everything and, uh, and uh, I'd be very surprised otherwise. In that case, would anyone like to make a motion? Yes, Steve. <clears throat> motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Peter Anastas, trustee of Joe Schmo Realty Trust, the minor subdivision review of Zebco, a two lot subdivision located off Shore Road, be deemed complete. Second. Uh, any further discussion? No? All those in favor of the uh, motion indicate by raising your right hand. We have a unanimous vote for completeness. Um, uh, other than the items which were Yes, we had a unanimous vote for complete. Uh, 
Um, uh, given the vote for completeness, are there any other items which uh, which are of concern uh, for us to give the applicant some directive? Oh, I'm here. Oh yes. Now, one of the items that uh, we do have as a possibility uh, to put on the agenda would be a public hearing uh, for the. Uh, for the minor subdivision review. Do you entertain another motion at this point? Uh, yes. Motion with the board to consider be it further order that the application be tabled to the regular June 16, 1998 planning board meeting at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Tom. Uh, does the applicant have any con any issues with any of the uh, items which the uh, town's engineer has uh, conveyed in a letter to uh, Maureen dated May 12th? No, we don't. As a matter of fact, I think we've addressed all of them in the uh, revision to the plan which we have with us tonight. Okay. Thank you. Any further items for discussion? On the, on the motion and the second. No. Uh, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion indicate by raising your right hand. We have another unanimous vote. Uh, in parting, is there, is there any further uh, clarifications from the applicant that they'd want us to address before going forward? No, I guess uh, other than to ask if there's any uh, burning issues that we should bring before the board to address at a public hearing. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that we do on subdivisions, even even small ones like the one from Fitzpatrick Associates, was get out and take a look at the site. Uh, would anybody be interested in looking at the site before we go into the substantive evaluation? Uh, look at the wetland area in between the two houses or the lots in general. Would anyone like to make an official outing of it? I'm, I'm pretty sure all of us know where these sites are. Mm -hmm. Can we do it informally on our own? Is that a problem at all? This is just a very busy time of year to try to get everyone together all at once. Can we drive down that gra gravel road? Which belongs to somebody else. <laughs> Is that all right? Yes, I just checked again. Just need a flashing planning, planning board member light on your car. <laughs> Blue one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much for no the more presentation. No more information. We'll see. And you know, I, one little thing. One, um, yes. The land that you're planning on keeping in a no-cut zone on the onshore road is a variance of, what, nine and a half feet from one lot to the next. I understand it's based on area, not width, but it seems to me it would be more attractive for, for everyone um, if that width was kept the same across both lots. We're following the guidance of the town, the one-fifth of an acre. <laughs> Is that, is that going to throw up the calculations? There's no maximum. <laughs> <laughs> Average. <laughs> Average. Yes, so will we not. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Final application and the 
final item on this evening's agenda is the OmniPoint Antenna Site Plan. A request by OmniPoint Communications for a site plan review and an RP3 permit to add an antenna to an existing tower located at 351 Spurwink Ave. Uh, we'll be reviewing tonight under section 19-9 site plan completeness and section 19-8-3 RP3 permit completeness. Uh, if the applicant could come to the podium, identify yourself, and give us a brief summary of the application, we'd be very interested in hearing. Certainly. Uh, my name is Peter Cook. I'm here on behalf of OmniPoint Communications. Um, OmniPoint, uh, as a point of reference, is a uh, company engaged in uh, the deployment of a PCS network, which is uh, similar to a cellular phone technology. It's a digital-based uh, wireless technology, and uh, we're assisting OmniPoint in the deployment of a, that network uh, or a network throughout uh, the coastal area of Maine, stretching from Kittery up through the uh, greater Portland area. Um, the site we're proposing at uh, Mr. Strzok's property at 351 Spurwink is, uh, uh, as we mentioned in our uh, planning board workshop, uh, in addition to uh, that network, uh, which will help us bring service to uh, Cape Elizabeth. Um, what we are proposing is the installation of three panel style antennas on an existing 140 foot structure, or approximately 140 foot structure, uh, owned by Mr. Strout. Uh, I would point out that we are not, as part of the application, uh, looking to extend the height of this tower. We are using the uh, tower which is existing. Um, the installation would include uh, associated equipment at the base of the cab uh, base of the uh, tower, which would include a uh, uh, a uh, equipment cabinet, roughly uh, three feet deep by about five feet wide by about six and a half feet high, uh, on a uh, mounted on a concrete slab. Uh, we are not. Pro uh, we will be accessing the site through an, the existing gravel driveways on the site and we will be bringing utilities to the cabinet um, and those utilities consist only of telephone and electrical uh, via underground conduit from the existing conduit now located on the site to serving the other towers uh, in that area. Um, I would point out that the main difference in the plan from the time that we saw you to, uh, to now is um, that we have deleted a uh, fenced-in area. And I'll, with the board's permission, I'd like to uh, provide a couple of photographs which might save, uh, save you a little bit of time in terms of your consideration. <coughs> Uh, the uh, first photograph is, is of the tower itself. So you have an idea of, the, the, as you know, there are a number of towers on the property. Uh, that is the specific tower we're talking about. Uh, it's located roughly 165 feet from the nearest property line. Um, our first plan, we had shown a fenced enclosure uh, and had planned on providing uh, uh, landscaping if the board requested uh, around that. I think after further review, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, less is more, so we deleted the uh, fence, and hopefully the second photo gives you a good idea of the uh, wooded nature of that area, and uh, we think that might provide the best way to uh, uh, provide screening of the installation is to just maintain what's there. Uh, we have also added as a condition to uh, our plan on the last page, a condition that we will have the contractor restore the uh, site work, as you know, we'll, with the underground conduit, would require some trenching, uh, and we will restore that to, uh, to, to its existing, uh, existing conditions once we're completed. So what we are hoping tonight is that uh, uh, you'll rule favorably on the completeness of our application, and uh, hopefully we can convince you that, uh, uh, that given the minimal changes that we're providing that you might 
favorably uh, approve our application tonight as well. Thank you. Uh, the first thing for the board to consider is uh, the completeness, and we have two, we actually have two uh, areas under the ordinance to review uh, this application, and those consist of uh, site plan, uh, for site plan review, and also for resource protection district in the, in the RP3 uh, zone. Uh, so, in looking at the uh, application materials submitted, does anybody notice anything that... Uh, in particular, relates to completeness. This is somebody else's tower, right? It's Truck's tower, yes, ma'am. Okay. It seems to me you were going to attach something on another company's tower. Is that no? Am I we wrong? Uh, on that? We, uh, we uh, uh, will be mounting on a number of towers throughout the area, rooftop installations, so on and so forth. In Cape Elizabeth, we, uh, we did in, at one point look at the main, uh, <coughs> the main cellular tower, uh, but uh, structurally we felt that this tower would give us better coverage than, than the available mounting heights on that tower. So we did look at alternatives. But right now, this is the only tower in Cape Elizabeth that we are, that we're considering. Uh, Stephen. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, okay. Uh, before we make a motion. Yes, Tom. Well, I think just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> motion for the board to consider. He had ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of OmniPoint Communications MB Operations LLC for site plan review and an RP3 permit to install an antenna on an existing tower located at 351 Spurwick Ave be de deemed complete. Second. Uh, any discussion? Yes, I have uh, just my classic question in this case. Is, in this case. Uh, does anything that you're installing on this tower in any way interfere with either uh, shortwave radio uh, transmissions or television, uh, current television transmissions uh, it does in not. Cape Elizabeth? We're actually, uh, uh, A, our license precludes us from doing that, but uh, as a matter of, uh, of reference, the uh, frequency band that we are in is the 1900 megahertz band, <coughs> which is basically ultra high. Uh, ban with so we're frankly well aware uh, well away from the, the uh, types of spectrum that you're talking about okay thank you okay. Uh, I have a question for the applicant uh, I noticed uh, it did not seem that there would be a backup electrical there generator is not on the project the uh, cabinets are essentially uh, self-contained there is uh, some battery backup within the cabinets uh, very similar to um, a UPS system on a on a computer, mm -hmm. uh, so it just provides enough battery life for an orderly shutdown of the equipment. But we uh, we do not use any type of backup generator uh, similar to some of our competitors. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Did anybody else notice any other items with regards to completeness? This is an RP3 zone. I believe that is steep slopes over so many acres. Over to steep slopes over two acres. <coughs> yes, Tom. The irony strikes me that the only place you can put these is an RP uh, zone, and yet we require an RP permit. I mean, for obvious reasons, but we'll be changing that. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, and no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, indicate by raising your right hand. We have a unanimous vote for completeness. Uh, are there any concerns at this point? Just uh, before going on to, uh, well, actually, we have a little bit more of the 
of the uh, to consider here because we do have a uh, more to consider. We have a uh, conservation commission in town that helps the planning board provides comments as we get more and more into these uh, antennas um, there's there's technical issues and I know that there's a, uh, a communications uh, subcommittee working on a new ordinance uh, I would recommend that um, this planning board be provided with sort of a technical review of, of these uh, applications as they're coming before the board and will continue to come before the board mm -hmm. <coughs> We have to have another motion for completeness for the RP3 permit now. Step one covers the vote. Oh. That covered both. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, RP3 uh, review does also give us the uh, option of a public hearing. And is there any discussion on the uh, on a public hearing for this process? <coughs> I'll make yes. a motion. And we can Thank you. <coughs> motion for the board to consider be it ordered that the application be tabled to the regular January, excuse me, June 16th, 1998, meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Is there a second? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Back over here. Yes. Um, I, I don't recall in the past that there have been a lot of uh, citizens attending the public hearing, but I think it's important to continue to ask for public hearings on this type of application simply as the antennas get added to the towers and, and, and these, the applicant is working within the recommendations of minimizing the number of towers by adding antennas to existing towers. But I think it's helpful just as it was with that minor subdivision application as people start driving by and a house pops up here and another antenna goes there at least uh, the public has been notified and, and had an opportunity to come before us whether they do or not and it's a one month inconvenience to the applicant but I think town-wide there's there's good reason to do it yeah no, I agree but the last one we had for the other tower the main cellular tower was was very good and being able to at least sort of you know get the word out that this is uh, you know just some an array on an existing tower. Yes, Nancy. Can I ask what this is going to look like? Do we have a picture? Does it go straight up or? It's basically it's basically uh, three. It's on the existing tower. Be an arm, three arms coming out in each direction with these panel. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There'd be three arms coming off the tower with these panel and three panel antennas. It'll be different than, unlike the, um, what I would euphemistically call the, the tricorn hats that you see on the, on, the, on the larger tower. Structurally, this tower couldn't, couldn't take that type of, of, of configuration. So we will just have some small arms coming out with the panels mounted directly to that. And I think the second to the last page should give you some detail in terms of those antennas. <coughs> For the public hearing, just as you did with these photographs, if you had photographs of a typical installation, I think it would be very helpful. Uh, well, I, I tell you what I can, uh, I could also suggest is that I'd be more than happy to take those photographs and do kind of a before and after. We do have the, the ability to do some photo renderings um, to give you an idea of what, what it will look like after it's, after it's completed. There, there may not be anybody in the room, but the meetings are televised and well, it's displayed on the board. People will be able to see them at home. Sure, yeah. sure. Be happy. Is that the 8 by 10 or 8 by 12 scale? Are you comfortable with that? Would you like a larger, uh, uh, a larger display for? I, I think that's TV? fine. Okay. Good, good thing to have for a bulletin board around. Yeah, this is a somewhat unique itself. application just because of the tower itself. So it's not our standard situation. So I'd be hesitant to provide f photos of the tricorn type mm -hmm. configuration because it is a lot, more, a lot more massive than what, that what we're talking about here. So. Um, as I said, I think a photo rendering might be the, the best alternative. Good. Okay. Very good. Very good. We look forward to seeing you uh, next month. Thank you very much. Did we vote? We didn't vote on it? No. Okay. All those in favor of that last motion, indicate by raising your hand. <coughs> Unanimous vote. Now, now we can thank you. Another motion? Yes, please. <coughs> thank you, motion to adjourn. I'll s oh, I okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you very much, and see you in a couple weeks. <laughs>